According to a report from Deadline, Bumblebee, the first spinoff in the Transformers franchise, has signed Kubo and the Two Strings director Travis Knight to helm the movie, marking his first live-action film. The screenplay, which emerged from Transformers director and Paramount's Writer's Room project, is from Christina Hodson, with Lorenzo D. Bonaventura, Michael Bay, and Steven Spielberg coming in to produce. Bumblebee is slated to open on June 8, 2018. Roca, what do you think about Travis Knight helming the Bumblebee spinoff? Oh. Of course we're tossing the Transformers <laughs> story to Roca first. Well, it's Friday. It must be Transformer news. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look, this is a great idea. I loved Kubo and the Two Strings. I was surprised how much I enjoyed it because I saw it way later than other people did, and I'd heard some of the backlash against it. But I absolutely, backlash. Yeah, some people were saying the, the ending was a little blah, but I absolutely loved it, and I was very moved by the ending. I, I didn't know this was his first film that he's ever directed, this guy, let alone he's the son of Phil Knight. He's got money. He don't need to do nothing but sit back and enjoy that money. He's Phil Knight from Nike's kid? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you working? I know, that's what I'm saying. He'd be on a hammock somewhere. Get Getting hammered. That's probably what I'm going to do later today. On a anyway. Nike hammock. On a yeah. Nike swoosh hammock. <laughs> <laughs> but no, this is great. I love this idea. He's going to jump into live action. I've loved just about everything Leica has done, except for maybe box tools was a little uneven. Ugh. But everything else. You're crazy. Uh, no, I'm not crazy. Everything <laughs> else. Box everything else was was good. I enjoyed all that kind of uh, everything Leica has done. But this is going to be interesting because you've got a, a person who did the script. The script. She uh, just did that film, Unforgettable, with uh, with uh, Catherine Heigl. Uh, still trying to revive her career with that stuff, and it was a terrible movie. But the idea is, can she's come out of this writer's room? What does that mean? Like, has she got a really powerful script that they really like? Because Bumblebee is one of these characters that crosses generations and one of these characters that escapes criticism from all these movies, right? He always survives. Nobody ever says bashes Bumblebee. Nobody ever has a problem with how Bumblebee is portrayed. They enjoy the character of Bumblebee. So this is a smart spinoff. You know, people have loved this character since the 80s. Now, the, to me, the, my concern is what kind of story are they going to tell? Is it going to be a prequel story? Is it going to be a story that continues off Transformers 5 to lead us into Transformers 6, which is scheduled to come out in 2019? Because they're going to make this come out in 2018, right? And June 8th yeah. is what it's scheduled for. So, But it's going to go up against the Godzilla sequel, too, which will be an interesting situation. But for me, I love this idea. I love that this guy's taking it over because he brought so much heart and emotion and a, just a great journey in Kubo and the Two Strings. So what are we going to do with Bumblebee? I, I look forward to see what he can do with it. Well, it must be Bizarro Friday because you and me like are on, in sync on Logan. <laughs> We're in sync on Kubo and the Two Strings. <laughs> Something weird is going on yes. today. For me, I was surprised. I Like you, I, I love Kubo and the Two Strings. Mm -hmm. I thought it deserved the uh, the... The Academy Award for Best Picture, Animated Picture. It didn't. I, I still like Zootopia, yeah. but I, I thought this was a very special film. Travis Knight did a great job. I think he actually came in studio to to promote Kubo and Two Strings. He mm. did. Yeah. Did you interview him? Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. So I thought he would either take on either the next Leica project or maybe an indie drama. So I didn't know he was going to make that jump from something like Kubo and the Two Strings to this very big franchise. I mean, yeah. it, it's going to be the first non Michael Bay directed Transformers movie that mm -hmm. he's doing. And so is he going to fall in the footsteps and kind of keep with that same pattern, or is he going to break off and and use what he's learned from... Because before he directed uh, Kubo and Two Strings, he was still basically a producer and mm -hmm. owner of Like a Studio, so he's been around mm -hmm. that. Is he going to take his own style and, and, and put that in the Bumblebee mm -hmm. movie? I'm not sure. Ellis? Uh, you know, Dennis, I, I don't even want to talk about this story. I don't think we should. I think we should shut it down right now because I don't want Michael Bay to be watching movie talk and be reminded that there's a Bumblebee movie coming out. I don't want him to have anything to do with this. I want him to wake up and say, oh, I should be producing this. I should be giving tips. No, Michael, you should. You got enough stuff to focus on with your Transformers movie. Just let Knight go off and make his little Bumblebee movie and let's get it standalone. I want this to feel like it's totally different from the other Transformers movies. Obviously, it's going to be tied to that universe. But man, if we can get a guy who told a story like he told with Kubo and the Two Strings mm. or any other projects he's worked on. He's been able to inject some heart, some humor into a fun adventure story. If we could get that with Bumblebee, he's the right Transformer to do mm. for Travis Knight because he is, he's got that underdog quality to him yep. that I'd like to see that as a feature film. I just don't want this to turn into Ninja Turtles out of the shadows where <laughs> you had so much potential, but because of certain people producing, kind of overlording over everything, we don't get the movie that we wanted to get. Michael Bay can direct movies well. 13 Hours was fantastic. The Rock is awesome. I just don't like where he takes Transformers from an action perspective, from a storytelling perspective, and especially from a sense of humor perspective. So if we can get Bumblebee away from that a little bit, I'd be really excited to see this. Perry, are you excited for the Bumblebee spinoff directed I by Travis Knight? 
I'm a little torn on this one right now. Because on the one hand, if you're going to get me excited about a Transformers movie, mm. it's attaching someone like Travis Knight to direct it. I think this is a really cool opportunity for him just from a, char from a character perspective. And this is going to be his first live action movie also. And... And That's only, not an easy transition no, to make. Only his I, second movie, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't I don't know if, you know, Kubo is an excellent, excellent mm -hmm. film. That That's a different story, making that kind of move. I have faith in him. The downside to this to me is I hope this does not foreshadow anything to come for Laika because everyone yeah. knows the Laika mm -hmm. movies did not do too well at the box office. And yes, he's got that Nike money in his pocket, but... How long can you keep that up until you have to say, we need to stop taking risks and telling these really interesting stories and shooting them in these really interesting ways because it doesn't have wide appeal like a Disney or Pixar movie. So I just hope this, suggest this suggestion, this uh, decision on his part, just means nothing for the state of Laika, and Laika will continue to do what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I thought it was, I was surprised that he, yeah. he went from something like that really unique to something that's a pre-established franchise and a big tentpole franchise. Which, I mean, maybe it's a good switch for him. Yeah. I, it, mm. it is, you know, stretching stretching your legs and, like, trying to do new things creatively, too. I mean, he's, you know, he's in a little bit of a box with animation mm. and what you can capture stop-motion-wise, and now he's kind of just exploring another box, trying to take something that already exists and something that people already love and put his own spin on it. So it could mean good things for Bumblebee. I mm. just... I just don't know about Leica movies. Well, that's what was so... But Kubo was deceptively a large movie. Like, it's, it has a very large scope. And yeah. so mm -hmm. I think that's what he's going to bring, is this idea that he can still keep the sort of an independent feel to the film, but still put it in a larger box. And I think it's certainly it's Keep bringing up the term box. He did box trolls? Is this <laughs> just a clever throwback to box trolls? They're the ones that needed cheese, right? Why are you so angry? Yeah. I can get on board with that. <laughs> so <laughs> angry because you dissed the box trolls. Yeah. yeah. What? How you dare like the box you? Trolls? Yeah, yeah. Box, box trolls is great. Is great. What's wrong with like, you guys crazy? A little oh. troll. Like bizarre cheese. world? Yeah. Wow, okay. It ain't a Friday movie talk unless we pick on Roku. Yes. I don't understand. <laughs> I'm not picking on you. I'm picking on anybody that doesn't like box trolls. Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, avocado.